Hey guys, today I'm doing a little video that I haven't really done before. Just because I've been I've been watching so many people re reviewing diecast cars lately, I decided to do one of my own. So as you can tell, I'm reviewing NASCAR diecasts, both big, and both big, well a little, a little big and small. Yep. And I'm pretty sure every single small one down there is a is is a 155 or a 164 scale. I'm not exactly sure. Someone can correct me in that comment section if you'd like to. And then the big ones up there, Dale Jr. is probably probably um I don't want to say 124 because that seems too big to be a 124. And. Tony Stewart and Jeff Gordon are probably a probably a one probably a one most very much a most likely a 124 again correct me if I'm getting all these wrong uh, I'm not a diecast expert like all the people I watch but let's begin first I'm gonna get to all the ones that have duplicates even though I have the small ones in numeric order So let's get right into it. Let's see. The first one we're going to get to is Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jr. Now why did I say Jr. wrong? I'm going to get to the big one first. Let me go get it. Alright, first we have the big one. This is the number 8 paint scheme from, I believe, 2006 because. He wore um, he wore this paint scheme in my, in one of my favorite movies of my childhood, Cars, when he made his cameo appearance. I like it's a little bit dusty because it's been sitting up on that garage shelf for a while. Since I don't really have space in my room to keep this, I'm not really sure if this is mine or my dad's. If my dad let me have it in my room when I was little. Let's see. Let's take a look. This one's actually still in quite pristine condition, even though I, even though I kept it in my room and maybe played with it, even though I really shouldn't have. Let's see. Yes, this is from 2006. It says 2006 Monte Carlo right there, and made in China, obviously. And I, this is a very detailed underside. You have the engine up there, the exhaust. That comes out the side right there with no muffler. In NASCAR, you don't. Who needs a muffler? And this down here, don't know what that is really. And Motorsport Authentic. That must be the company that made this. Now let's take a look at the side. Let's take a look at the hood. After I finish dusting it off, let's see. There's the Dale Earnhardt Inc. logo, Chevy logo, st st sticker headlights because. Car Tomorrow's did not have, well, maybe I can't call this a Car Tomorrow since the Car Tomorrow wasn't introduced until 2007, but stock cars didn't have real headlights. Instead, whoops, sorry, that's falling. Instead, they just had stickers like that, and one of them has the number on it, although for the current sticker headlights, they don't have the number right on them. They have it right below. It leads me to wonder, is, is the Gen 7 of stock cars going to have real headlights so they don't need to worry about lighting the track? Because that would be cool. Also, that would make them a little bit more street legal. And take a look at this side. You have the number 8 with the fork, Ritz, Snap-on. So you have a bunch of different sponsors right there. Good Goodyear Eagle racing tires, like usual, with black rims. See white window net. That's actually plastic. The you know, the whole frame of this car is plastic, but just just the body is die cast. And the windows are all plastic. There's the Dale Earnhardt Inc. logo, Menards logo. So you go to the back end. It says Dale Jr. So everyone knows who he is. Oh wait, there's Dale Jr.'s signature right up there right by a Dale Earnhardt Inc. logo. Whoa, sorry about that. It fell. Oh. Oh, my phone's 
cell and let the car. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, it fell. But at least it was my phone that fell and not, not, not the car. Because I bet these things are worth quite a bit now. Do correct me if these things are worth. Yeah. What I'm using for a tripod is not good. better. That should balance better. I just adjusted the base. Adjusted the base. All right. Sorry for my little fail on reviewing the, the big die cast. Let me get back to it. And on the other side, there's more sponsors. Another number eight with the fork. And then we have fixed window, does not, um, that, that, that's the window for the passenger side, although there is no passenger seat in this car. And if you look through the, the interior is quite detailed. You can see the steering wheel, the gauges, the shifter. And uh, if you look closely, you can see the seat and and all the roll bars. On this side, there's no seat, like I've already told you. No seat. And unfortunately, these flaps on top do not open. So this one's more of a, just a leave on your shelf all the time type car. The hood does not open. The trunk does not open. Wait, I was just looking at the trunk. See, so it's Chevy badge down there. Dale Jr. right here, so everyone knows who he is. Dale Earnhardt Inc. right there. The typical Chevy Monte Carlo tail, tail lights, sticker tail lights, actually not real tail lights, with number eights on both sides. And I can't tell what sponsor that is right there, but I've never seen one with a sponsor on there. The eight takes out the place of the reverse lights and the turn signals because you don't really need any of that on the racetrack. Plus, these aren't even real tail lights. <sighs> yeah. And I like how the tires are nice, maybe synthetic rubber. It makes them look and feel like real tires instead of them just being plastic. I guess that's why these big die casts are sought after. And I've already gotten to the front end, I think. Grill, Chevy badge, sticker headlights, one with a number eight, and Monte Carlo SS. This is a Chevy Monte Carlo SS. 2006 was the last year they ran these until they were, when they replaced them with the Impala SS. They eventually took the SS off the Impala, and then the Impala was replaced with the, the the Aussie built Chevy SS and most recently the Chevy SS was replaced with the Camaro ZL11 LE all right now let's take a look at the small die cast it looks just like the big one see quite detailed you can see the interior a little there you can see the stick see the steering wheel you can see the seat This one, surprisingly, had, wait, it has a tiny chip right there, but doesn't have a lot of wear and tear. Well, maybe may because I didn't play with this one a lot. Same on the back. This car is just same as that one, but just shrunken. I can maybe do some comparisons later. Yeah, that's it. Not too much explanation there. No differences. The only difference is this has plastic tires instead of rubber tires. Now, the next duplicate we're going to get to is Tony Stewart. This one is much lighter, so I could carry it with one hand. 
This is just a smaller version of the Dale Jr. car. And it's ex also extremely dusty. The tires are even dirtier. While we look at this, this one's a 2007 Monte Carlo. I guess they ran the Monte Carlos in 2007 for a short time. Then they unveiled the Impala for the car of tomorrow. Someone correct me if I'm wrong about any of this. This one's also same, very detailed under here with the engine up here, exhaust, suspension and all that. Also made in China. And I can't tell what that logo says. N.A. Is that a company that makes die casts too? So I guess this one and the Dale one were not made by the same company. This one, see on this side, we have very detailed Goodyear Eagle racing tires with black rims again. Goodyear logo up here. Bunch of sponsors. I have to kind of read them all. Number 20, Home Depot right here. Home Depot logo right there black by the windows. There's kind of a black and white stripe that goes down there. Some paint chipping, I guess, because I played with this one a bit when I was little. And Home Depot on the back, Chevy badge, black spoiler. And uh, one tail light that has nothing on it. One tail light that has a number 20 on it. Funny. I guess Tony Stewart was not as excessive with the number placing as Dale Jr. was. Again, same number 20 here, same Home Depot here, white window net. Wait, there's a Home Depot logo right here. Number 20 on the roof. Unfortunately, the flaps do not open. The, the trunk does not open. And this hood does not open. However, look at the front end, we have Home Depot logo on the hood. Two sticker headlights. One has an orange number 20 on it instead of a white number 20. Chevy badge, grill, Monte Carlo SS badge. No more sponsors by the Fenders. Completely black bumper. Has some slight paint chips in it. Ugh. And this one's just like the Dale one where like nothing opens, so this one's really just meant to stay on a shelf forever. And uh, now let's move on to um, the small one. Only it's due to the fact that those ones are much heavier, my arms hurt more when I'm holding them. Because those ones aren't meant to be held really, just meant to be on display. Now the tiny one is exactly the same. Well, not 100% because like, but wait, no, they are the same. Wait, no. And this one has a, little, has a little bit more paint chips on it because I played with this one more just because it's smaller and I could actually lift it. Yep, exactly the same. Except the bottom isn't as detailed on these small ones. And again, there are similarity plastic tires. And not as detailed rims. Isn't showing all the lug nuts and all that. And that was that one. This is just a little size comparison thing. I can put do side-by-sides later. Now... Let's get into, I've done the duplicates already. Wait, I have one more duplicate, except it's not a big and a small, it's a number duplicate. Let's pick these up. The first, it's these two. These both salute to petty cars. Well, let's go with the more historically accurate one. First, this one's a, this one is a 1984 Pontiac Grand Prix. I assume this is what Richard Petty drove before his retirement. See, it has number 43 in red on the side. The King, because Richard Petty was the king of the track. 
The back is not too detailed. We have 200 wins, seven championships. Very correct. Red number 43 on the top. A yellow stripe going down the center. Red number 43 on the side. Another yellow stripe on the side. The Kings kind of chipped away right there. Completely black rims and tires. Tires don't say good year on them at all for some reason. Um, silver underside. This one's a Hot Wheels. Copyright 2003. This one was released in 2003. And, uh, and the front isn't too detailed, it's just plain blue. Pontiac grill, headlights are just blue. And yeah. And on the hood, we have Salute to Petty. It just says Salute to Petty. I don't think um, Petty at, ever actually wore this paint scheme at any of his races. I assume that this was just a salute telling everyone how good of a driver he was. That it was a sad time when he retired. Now, let's get to the next one, which is this Lucky Charms promo. Dodge Intrepid. Uh, this one's not one of my favorites. Reason number one is a Dodge Intrepid. Why did they ever race those in NASCAR? I would... I wish they would have put something else in that they had at that time. Like maybe even maybe even put what well, not the Stratus. Stratus was also Stratus also sucked. Nah, the Charger or Challenger didn't quite exist yet. Neon wouldn't quite fit in the whole NASCAR thing. Let's see, this one you can kind of see that tail lights, but it's just plain red back there. Salute to Petty right by the spoiler. Blue number 43 on the top, blue number 43 on the side, Lucky Charms on the side. <sighs> Lucky Charms. Dodge on the front. And one of the headlights has a number 43 on it. If one of the headlights has a number 43 on it, the other headlight doesn't. Yep, Lucky Charms Mobile. Ooh, and this is a 2001 Intrepid. I mean, was 2001 the year the Dodge introduced the Intrepid to NASCAR, or was this just one of the years it was running? And the um, underneath here is white, and this one, this one, Petty never drove this one because he never drove an Intrepid. And he retired before the Intrepid existed, and before the Intrepid raced in NASCAR. And he never drove a car that was completely red or sponsored by Lucky Charms. He always drove a car that was blue and sponsored by STP. And Richard Petty reminds me of cars because the king was an anthropomorphic version of his 1970 Superbird. And the King was also voiced by Petty. Yep, all right. We've gotten through the, the all the duplicates. Now it's time to get go in numeric order. The first one we have right here is number nine. KC Khan or whatever. I don't really know how to pronounce his name. This is a Dodge Charger. This is a Dodge Charger made by the same company that made the Tony Stewart big die cast. Number nine, Dodge Dealers as a sponsor on the hood. Dodge on the side, McDonald's right here. The spoiler's black, has a bit of wear. Probably because I played with this one a lot on the back. Dodge dealers right here. Why do they have to put another Dodge right there? Tail lights look kind of look kind of like the real charger. Is that Siemens it says on this tail light? Yeah, it looks like it. 
Number nine on this tail light. The bumper has quite a bit of paint, um, quite a bit of scratches. Let's see, and this one, again, very detailed underside. Another black underside that explains the same company. And on the front end, we have the Dodge Crosshair Grill because we wouldn't be able to tell it was a Dodge if it didn't have a crosshair grill. And then we have the word charger right above here. They didn't put the Dodge Ram logo because it's already right there. I don't know why they had to put Dodge right here when they already had Dodge up there. Yep. Sadly, Dodge isn't in NASCAR anymore. They they left they left in 2012. Although a Dodge Challenger raced in the Xfinity Series up until 2018, surprisingly. Yeah, and this one's a little bit more detailed with a two-tone paint scheme. Red down here, white up here. It kind of swoops down, looks really cool. Red rims instead of just black rims. This actually says Goodyear Eagle, but it's faded quite a bit. And inside of this thing, all look quite detailed. You can kind of see the steering wheel and the stick and maybe the seat. White window net again. And uh, yeah. Now let's get to the next one, which is um, number 12, Ryan Newman. Number 12 in the Altel Mobile One Dodge Charger. This is the bumper, man, the bumper's quite beat up on this one. I must have loved this one when I was a kid. And we have on the side, let's see, wait, go over here at the front. We have again the Dodge Crosshair Grill, the Charger, the word Charger right above there, and then the, the Dodge logo right there. Then we have the, the fake headlights, number 12 on one of them. Now these headlights look extremely real, like they came off a real Charger. Then on the side we have Oh, the exhaust is not right there. It's probably on the other side. We have number 12 with the kind of wave of white Altel logo. That does say Ryan Newman right above. Right above the window. There's the window net. Also, I believe this charger and that charger are the exact same model. I mean, exact same die cast model, not... Wait, they are the exact same car model. We obviously know that. But I meant exact same die cast model. This one feels like it has the rubber tires, so maybe they're not the same. Or maybe that one did too. Rubber tires feel nice on this one. Again, very detailed. Other side, we have the engine and then the... The exhaust going out on the passenger side. This window, fixed window, it says Alltail number 12, pretty much the same on the other side. On the rear, I've already shown the rear. Let's see the rear, it says Alltail.com, Mobile One, Dodge on the bumper, fake tail lights, the one on the right has the number 12 on it, and the Dodge down there. There, and black rims again. But you can actually see the Goodyear Eagle on this one. Actually, that one's a little bit better. <sighs> so, now the next one we're getting to is number 15, Jeff Bondi. And uh, Ford Thunderbird, or T-Bird, which is number 15 for Motorcraft, Ford, Motorcraft Quality Parts, Ford. Motorcraft Quality Parts says Ford right here. It does not say Thunderbird on this. So here we have the two headlights, 
This one has the number 15 on it. And this one doesn't have as much wear and tear. I probably didn't play with it a lot. On the back, we don't have any tail lights, not even fake ones. We just have Motorcraft in real big words and a number 15 down there. This side, exact same. The bottom isn't as detailed, and this has a battery pack, probably because it's supposed to make some noise, but the battery's died or corroded. I'm, and I don't know if we have these disc batteries anymore. I'm gonna have to see. And this car's just a plain red with a black stripe underneath, basic black rims. The good year has faded quite a bit. And that's it for this one. And I've gotten to both the petty cars already. Now let's get to my all time favorite from my childhood, and that is. Jimmy Johnson in a 2006 Chevy Monte Carlo SS number 48 Lowe's I love I love Jimmy when I was little surprised this one doesn't have the most wear and tear although I'm pretty sure I bought this one just because I love Jimmy Johnson oh and this one's a little bit more detailed it has an arrow pointing to where you need to put the jack to service the car during a pit stop like the pick rope with the jack under there, then you change the tire, and it would fuel it up right there, right by the Lowe's thing. I actually like the paint scheme on this car quite a bit. I also kind of like his alley paint scheme he has currently, and that will be his final paint scheme before his retirement. If I kind of say this one t towards almost the last because. Jimmy's sadly retiring. And there's the JJ signature right above the window. 48 on the roof. Lowe's with a silver trunk lid on the back. Lowe's on the back. Two yellow stripes coming in by the Chevy badge. Basic Monte Carlo tail lights. That one maybe has a sponsor on it. That one just has a 48 on it, it's not focusing. There we go. Bumpers have tiny, minimal wear on them. We have rubber tires again. This side, passenger side, looks almost the same as the other side. Silver right around here. I've already mentioned Lowe's right here. Chevy badge, Monte Carlo SS. This headlight has a big big paint chip by it. That one there has the 48 on it, and then there's the plain one right there. Hmm. Again, the bottom's very detailed. The engine up there. Exhaust on this side. Sadly, none of these have dual exhaust, like one here and one there. Yeah. Now, let's get on to now let's get on to number 78, Gary Bradbury in a Ford Taurus. This one is, is kind of a leaser favorite for me. I don't really know this driver. And also, it's a Ford Taurus. This is also lame like the Dodge Intrepid. Well, I'm glad NASCAR races the Mustang in the Cup Series currently. Biden and finally got rid of the Fusion, which the Fusion came right after the Taurus. And uh, the one reason why I like this one, let's take a look at it first. On the front we have Pilot Travel Center. Don't really know what that is. Then we have Ford, Taurus. The, the fake headlights and turn signals for some reason don't have the 78 right on them. Instead, the 78 is right below them, kind of like a current gen stock car. Except this car is a 1996. 
And um, let's take a look at the side. It goes from white to yellow. To yellow for the roof with there's a red 78. And his name is right there, I think. Yep. And the window bars are kind of fading away. Then we go to black right here with a red stripe separating the yellow from the other paint. 78. Then we have Pilot Travel Center logo right here. Go to the back, no tail lights, just the big Pilot logo and a 78. This side's pretty much the same, the passenger side. And the one thing I like about this car is, watch this. Flip this open, flip the hood open, and there you get you the hood opens and you can see the engine. The the basic V8 that all stock cars had then. And when you're done looking at your engine, you can just close the hood right up. But sadly, the trunk d does not open. And I like how the wheels are. They look like basic Goodyear Eagles with black rims, but a red outline in the black rim. That kind of adds to the contrasting color of this car. And the, and the tires are also rubber instead of plastic. All right, we've gotten to that one. Now let's move on to the next one, which is the only one in the background that I haven't gotten yet, which is Jeff Garden. This, this model is honestly one of my favorites. As you can see, this is the Pepsi. See the, the, fr the, the front wheels turn on this, which is quite nice. You can display it in different ways. The front wheels don't turn on the other big ones. And if you look in here, the interior is a little bit more detailed instead of just being white or black. And the window net's black, that's a little bit different. And the window net is actually a net, it's not plastic. This one is what I call true quality. And if you look under here, I can turn the wheels like this. An actual different colored exhaust. It points out that side. Right here you have number 24, DuPont, all the different sponsors. Nicorette on the back, TEC, DuPont, Chevy badge, taillights, one has a Q on it, don't know what sponsor that is, and one has a 24 on it. And when you go to this side, the passenger side, this has a glue stain on it, it looks like. Figure out how to clean that off. Also, this one's extremely dusty. And, yep, yeah, this side's about the same. And there are several things I like with this car, besides just the fact that the wheels turn. You may have seen it, but the hood opens. And look, it has Pepsi inside the hood, exposing this, probably an LSV8, correct me if I'm wrong, with an electric fan, big radiator. And you can see all the belts, the air cleaner, the cylinder heads. You can see just about everything. And as I've shown you down here, the wheel, it shows how the wheels turn. We shouldn't play with that too much or else it may break. It shows where the exhaust comes from. The next thing I like is see, uh, it says, Hot Hues Unleash the Color. Don't know what that is. And when you go back here, look, the trunk opens. And the only thing that's in the trunk is the place where the fuel travels. And I assume this bottom part is the fuel tank. So that's the only thing the trunk is useful for, fixing the fuel lines, if it's leaking fuel into here. Don't know what that number is in the window, in the back window. And another cool thing is, can't do it with my fingers, but look, both flaps on top open. This is a full-on NASCAR diecast. 
And this is what all NASCAR diecasts should be. Close these. And yeah, I saved the best for last. So, now you guys may not have liked this video, but here we go. This is just me. Ooh, Goodyear number one Eagle are what these tires are. And a little bit more detailed. Gold outline. And black rims. Um, silver center, silver lug nuts. Wow, this thing's extremely detailed. I love this one. It, look, it even shows the suspension on the back wheels. This one is made by... And yeah, that's it for this video. See you guys next time.